restore again the kingdom to Yisrael? And he said unto them, It is not for you to know the times or the seasons which the Father hath put in his own power. But you shall receive power after that, it says the Holy Ghost, meaning the mind of our Heavenly Father, the Spirit of the Almighty. Listen. Or the Ruach HaKadosh is come upon you. And you shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem, and in Yahuda, and in Shamarun, and into the uttermost parts of the earth. Do you see this, my family? Verse 9. And when he had spoken these things, while they beheld, he was taken up, and a cloud received him out of their sight. And while they looked steadfastly toward heaven, as he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel. Which also said, you men of Galilee, O Galal, why stand you gazing up into heaven? The same Yahshua, which is taken up from you into heaven, shall so, shall so come in like manner as you have seen him go into heaven. Our thoughts should go back to those men of Galilee. Our ancestors who received that power of attorney and what they did. And many of you are familiar with the account as you read, as we continue to study in the days and years to come, Father's willing. We'll continue to learn and mature in what these men really represented. Do you see this, my family? And what they passed down, do you understand? To faithful men. Now, let's go to Acts, the ninth chapter. So notice how we're seeing the leadership here. Notice how the king is giving them authority now to do his work, to finish his ministry. You didn't have Kafa doing his own thing. You see this? You didn't have the other 12, the other 11, you see, or, you know, later on when Shaul came, you didn't have it where these men was just doing their own thing. Now, there were certain times where certain things came up and issues arose, but overall, when they were rectified, they were all on one accord. You see this, my brothers and sisters. And that's what every leader got to be willing to do. Get on one accord. You see this, my brothers. Thank you, my father, my king. Those who are in the body of the Messiah, brothers and sisters, those of you who are younger, in the spirit, in the walk. Do what you can as you're learning the doctrine, as you learn the teaching. If there's issues, we got to be able to do it like our king said. And I'm saying to you all, continue to keep practicing and come to perfection. Thank you, my father, my king. Acts the ninth chapter, please. And this is regarding our ancestor Shaul. Listen, listen here. Acts the ninth chapter, starting at verse 10. It says, and there was a certain disciple at Damasak named Hananiah. And to him said the master in the vision, Hananiah. And he said, behold, or look, I am here. Adonai. The master said unto him, arise and go into the street, which is called street, and inquire in the house of Yehuda for one called Shaul of Tarsus. For behold, or look, he prays, and I've seen in a vision a man named Hananiah coming in and putting his hand on him that he might receive his sight. Now, what's interesting about our ancestor Hananiah, or Ananias as it reads, our master instructed him to do something at first he was a little reluctant to do. Do you see this? Listen. Verse 13. Then Hananiah answered, Adonai, master, I have heard by many of this man, how much evil he has done to your saints at Jerusalem. And here he have authority from the chief priests to bind all that call on your name. You see, what's so interesting about Shaul, our wonderful ancestor, he was a man that had power of attorney. But what's so interesting about his conversion is that before his conversion to our king, Master Yahushua, he had power of attorney from who? Those who did not believe in our king. He had the power of attorney to bind those of our primitive ancestors. 
that called on the name of Master Yahushua. Now, he's going to receive a new power of attorney. And what we should learn is that Shaul, even though he did evil in the past, do you see this? Our master now is going to change some things about him. So what we can learn from this is not to judge one another of each other's past. Do you understand? This is why you are not to call your brother Raka. It's very dangerous to do that as our king commanded in what is known as the Beatitude and the Similitudes. As far as the teaching is concerned, and when you look at that as far as the Sermon on the Mount, he warned us. You can be in danger of salvation for doing so. Do you understand? Listen. Thank you, my father, my king, for your wisdom. Verse 15. But the master said unto him, go your way. For he is a chosen vessel unto me to bear my name before the Gentiles or the nations and kings and the children of Yisrael. For I will show him how great things he must suffer for my name's sake. How many of you are willing to suffer? How many leaders out there are willing to suffer? I speak this in love, but with passion. Do you see this? Suffering for his name. How many of you are ready? Do you see this, my brothers? To suffer for his name. To be ostracized. Whether it's in your personal lives. Whether in your finances. Do you understand? How many of us are willing to do that? Are we going to call on the name of Master Yahushua even if we don't have a job? Are we going to call on him when the money's low? When your bank accounts are in the negative? Are you still willing to preach this Bashur? Are you going to fold him and give up and go back to your regular lives? Who can withstand the challenge? It remains to be seen. Thank you, my father, my king. Let's go to First Timothy. Now we're going to go to a point where Shaul has been strengthened. And here he is now. Thank you so much, my father, my king. We're looking at Shaul now in a mature state. The previous chapter, you continue to read, you'll see how he received his conversion. He received this calling. Now we're going to look at a point where now he, here he is, matured. Our beautiful brother, matured. And here he is now. He's going to talk to Timothy, a young leader. Do you see this? Thank you, my father, my king. Go to 1 Timothy, brothers. 1 Timothy. Thank you, my father, my king, for your discipline. Because we need it. 1 Timothy, and let's look at 1 Timothy, the third chapter. Now we have an apostle now. Apostle that wasn't made by men, but by a king. He's going to talk to Timothy about future leaders. Okay, listen carefully. Let's study and listen to these qualities very carefully. Verse 1. This is a true saying. If a man desire the office of a bishop, he desire a good work. Do you see this? And those of you who are students in the language, look up that word bishop. Don't just get caught up in the English because sometimes people see that word bishop, their minds get a little distorted. Because people look at the wrong type of bishops that are out here in the world today. Do you see this? Do your research. Some of you already know, but continue to do your research and meditate on these things. Listen. A bishop then must be blameless. Let's stop for a moment. I want you to focus on these qualities. Do you see this? Just meditate on them. You understand? 
Stay in the context of it, but just meditate on these things. Okay? Thank you, my father king. It says a bishop then must be blameless. The husband of one wife. Vigilant. Sober. Of good behavior. Given to hospitality. Apt or able to teach. Not given to wine, nor striker, nor greedy, a filthy money, a filthy lucre. But patient, not a brawler, not covetous. One that rules well his own house, having his children in subjection with all gravity. For if a man know not how to rule his own house, how shall he take care of the assembly of the church of the almighty? That's powerful. Verse six, not a novice. Let's be lifted up with pride. He fall into the condemnation of the devil. Moreover, he must have a good report of them, which are without, lest he fall and to reproach in the snare of the devil. Do you see this, my family? Look at the characteristics of these men. See, what a lot of you don't realize, a lot of us got to learn, is the apostles passed down as our father king dictated that authority. This is why it's important to go back into history and even for our ancestors, as they call the church of primitive fathers, for those of you who are aware, I'm not saying all the people are, isn't mandatory to go back. What I'm saying is this with wisdom, as you led, this is why it's important to go back. Because if our ancestors did wrong, here's a parable, call them out. What did T'Challa say in that movie Black Panther? This is just a parable for you. What did he say when his ancestors was wrong? He said, you were wrong. All of you were wrong. Do you see this? So for the things that our ancestors, if they fell away, and some of them did, then we are to acknowledge that. But for those who preserved what was given by the apostles, we to acknowledge that. You see this, my brothers. Thank you, my father, my king. Verse 8. Likewise, must the deacons be grave, not double-tongued, not given to much wine, not greedy of filthy lucre or filthy money, holding the mystery of the faith in a pure conscience. And let these also first be proved. Then let them use the office of a deacon, being found blameless. That's powerful. You see this, my brothers. Even so must their wives be great, not slanderers, sober, faithful in all things. Let the deacons be the husbands of one wife, ruling their children and their own houses well. For they that have used the office of a deacon or servant will purchase to themselves a good degree and great boldness in the faith which is in the Messiah, Yahushua. These things write I unto you, hoping to come unto you shortly. But if I tarry long, that you may know how you ought to behave yourself in the house of the Almighty, which is the church or the assembly of the living Almighty, the pillar and ground of the truth. And without controversy is the great, excuse me, thank you, my father, my king, for the creation. And without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness or righteousness. The Almighty was manifest in the flesh, justified in the spirit. Seen of the messengers, it says angels, preach unto the Gentiles, believe on in the world, received up into glory. What a powerful message that he's given to Timothy. Timothy was a soldier. <laughs> he was a leader. And we're seeing how Shaul is passing on what he is to do. All the way from we learn to Masha and how Masha appointed men who had good character. We see how Shaul is given that. Similarities to Timothy. 
Let's go to Titus or Titus. Thank you, my father, my king. Thank you so much, my father, king, for who you are. Let's go to Titus. Just go ahead. <clears throat> Excuse me. Thank you, my father, my king. And let's start when Titus. And let's look at chapter number five. Let's look at what he tells Titus. I'm sorry. It's only one chapter in Titus. Let's go to verse five. Thank you, my father, McKee, for that correction. Verse five. Let's see here. Titus chapter one, verse five. Listen to what he says. He says, for this cause. Excuse me. Thank you, Father King, for the correction. There are three chapters in Titus. Let's go to, again, Titus. We're in chapter 1, and we're in verse 5. Let's commence. It says, For this cause left I, you in Crete, that you should set in order the things that are wanting, and ordain elders in every city, as I had appointed you. So we're seeing now. The power of attorney transferring over. See, it's my brothers and sisters. And we're seeing now what Titus is to do. Verse 6. If any be blameless, the husband of one wife, having faithful children, not accused of riot or unruly for a bishop must be blameless as the steward of the almighty not self-willed not soon angry not given to wine nor striker not given to filthy lucre or money but a lover of hospitality a lover of good men sober just Holy or set apart, temperate, holding fast the faithful word, as he had been taught that he may be able by sound doctrine both to exhort and to convince the gainsayers. For there are many unruly and vain talkers and deceivers, especially they of the circumcision. That's powerful. You see, the truth was to spread. It was to be much Labor, much laborers in the harvest. We look today and we see men out here now in these last days who are scoffers of the word. They're getting up here in their platforms and they're literally ridiculing the scriptures. And our Heavenly Father, Abba's revealed it to me and I'm revealing it to you all. He's raising up soldiers to be equipped. Not to fight in your flesh, to fight with the word. These men, are, these scoffers are going into history now. They're saying that the Bible is the white man's book now. They're saying that the Bible is plagiarized by Egyptian and ancient Kemet stories. Do you understand? They're going into the histories. They're going into the church fathers. Do you understand? And this is why Abba has me going in there. Make sure our ancestors got it right. And for those who didn't get it right, I disagree. But for those who did their job, I agree. The same thing with you leaders out there today, and I say this in love, but with passion. You preach the truth, I'm standing with you. You preach against the truth, I stand against you. And I expect the same from each and every one of you. This is a wonderful time that we're in. For brothers to be able to do what? Make amends and get it right. I'm watching you. And I'm so happy and thrilled of what's going on. You understand, my brothers? Thank you, my father, my king. Let's go to the first kafa. Let's go to Peter. Let's go to one of our ancestors. First Peter, chapter five. And let's start at verse one. And notice how Kafa is acknowledging other elders. 
Listen. The elders which are among you I exhort, who am also an elder and a witness of the sufferings of the Messiah, and also a partaker of the glory that shall be revealed. Feed the flock of the Almighty, which is among you, taking the oversight there, thereof, not by constraint, but willingly, not for filthy lucre, but of a ready mind. Neither as being lords or masters over the Almighty's heritage, but being examples to the flock. And when the chief shepherd shall appear, you shall receive a crown of glory that fade not away. Likewise, you younger, submit yourselves unto the elder. Yeah, or yes, all of you be subject one to another and be clothed with humility for the almighty resists the proud and give grace to the humble. You see this, my family. He says, humble yourself, therefore, under the mighty hand of the almighty that he may exalt you in due time. Casting all your care upon him, for he cares for you. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil, as a roaring lion, walk about seeking whom he may devour, whom resist steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brothers that are in the world. But the Almighty of all grace, who have called us unto his eternal Glory by the Messiah, Yahushua, after that you have suffered a while, make you perfect, establish, strengthen, settle you. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. By Sylvanus, a faithful brother unto you, as I suppose I have written briefly, exhorting and testifying that this is the true grace of the Almighty wherein you stand. The assembly that is at Babylon or Babel, elected together with you, salute you. And so do Marcus, my son, greet you one another with a kiss of charity or love. Peace be with you all that in the Messiah, Yahushua, Amen. Notice how he, he identified brothers at the end of the letter. He talked about one of his amanuensis, Savannah. You see this, brothers? So we know the apostles were not alone. You understand, my brothers? Thank you, my father, my king. Let's see something quickly. Let's see some. Let's go to. I want to show you something as I'm led. Let's go to. Please, God, my father, my king, help me to find it. Let's go to Philippians. Those who were in Philippi. I want to read. Let's look at uh, what Shaul had wrote to them. Starting at verse. One, it says, Paul, a Paul, Shaul and Timotheus, the servants of Yahushua the Messiah, to all the saints in the Messiah Yahushua, which are at Philippi, with the bishops and deacons. You see that? See, the apostles passed it down. You understand? Now. He says, grace be unto you and peace from the Almighty, our Father, and from the Master, Yahushua the Messiah. Now, I want all of you to look at verse, verses, uh, just go to verse 15. You can read this on your own time, but right now, go to verse 15. I want to show you something as I'm led. Verse 15. Some indeed preach the Messiah, even of envy and strife, and some also of goodwill. Did you see that? You see this, my brothers? We got to be careful. But notice what's going on as far as what Shaul is telling the assembly in Philippi. He says, the one preached the Messiah of contention, not sincerely, supposing to add affliction to my bonds, but the other of love, knowing that I am set for the defense of the gospel. Do you see this? Or the Bashura, listen. What then, notwithstanding every way, whether in pretense or in truth, the Messiah is preached, and I therein do rejoice, yes, and will rejoice. 
For I know that this shall turn to my salvation through your prayer and the supply of the spirit of Yahushua the Messiah. According to my earnest expectation and my hope that in nothing I shall be ashamed, but that with all boldness, as always, so now also the Messiah shall be magnified in my body, whether it be by life or by death. Shaul rejoiced. Even those who were preaching about Yahushua and they weren't sincere, he was still happy that nonetheless, the Messiah was preached. That's powerful. Let's go to Matthew. Matthew, the 12th chapter. Matthew 12 chapter and let's look at this final word from our king. I want to show you something. We all got to consider this. If we're not gathering, if we're gathering the wrong way, if we're not gathering the way our king has had us to do so, we're in trouble. You see this, my family? You understand? Listen. Matthew chapter 12. Look at verse 30. Listen what our king says. He that is not with me is against me. And he that gathereth not with me scattereth abroad. That's powerful. That's a warning. Let all of us be warned. Do you understand, my brothers and sisters? Either we're going to gather his way or we're going to gather our way. But if we gather our way and we scatter, we're going to answer to him on the day of judgment. I love all of you. Continue to grow behind the scenes. Make things right. You see this, my brothers? Y'all in my prayers, those leaders who are here now and those leaders who were in the previous years, my love for you hasn't changed. Peace and blessings to you. Maranatha. Amen.